Hello, how are you? I am um, very grateful to be here. I'm grateful to Texas Right to Life and to the Grams, Elizabeth, particularly for inviting us. And, um, you know, Eduardo's, he's a good looking kid, but uh, he's not this, you know what I mean? <laughs> Why are you laughing? I get that everywhere. Um, actually, I, I, uh, I'm quite sad because I'm, I'm coming from behind enemy lines, because I'm coming from Hollywood. You know, the place that, that gave us such atrocities as Cider House Rules and Million Dollar Baby and Brokeback Mountain, and the list goes on and on. And there's three crazy guys, myself, Eduardo, and Alejandro. Leonardo, Eduardo, and Alejandro. How uh, Latin American is that, huh? <laughs> they call us the three amigos, and we're not offended by that too much, you know. <laughs> but... Um, we were there, and we realized two things. First, the power of the media. We read somewhere that um, meaningful dialogue between parents and children on, a, on any given day is about six minutes. But in front of other media, it's about six hours when you count television, internet, films, music, video games, etc. And uh, it's just a fact parents aren't necessarily the biggest influence in kids' lives anymore. And so much of what we see in the culture of death has been in the hearts and minds of the people that have been making the movies and the music that have dominated our culture. And it's just sad. Particularly for us as Christians. That's the second thing we realized. That Hollywood doesn't belong to studios or to some interest or to some political ideology. Hollywood, as everything else, belongs to God. And we are there to try to claim it back for him. Uh, that might seem crazy and idealistic and everything else, but you know what? I don't care because I know it to be true. And the three of us came to that very same resolution and, and, and conviction and realization and it meant a lot of hardships as it always does when you decide to follow the Lord. For me it meant leaving 20th Century Fox. I'm an attorney. Don't hold that against me either. And I was doing business affairs at Fox. I mean leaving all that because I couldn't be part of a, of a big evil empire anymore. For our director Alejandro it meant turning down every single job coming out of film school. You know basically living out of his, his broken down car and for Eduardo, who I'll speak about in a little bit, it meant everything. It meant everything that he came to the U.S. for when he realized it was a lie, giving it all up, all the empty pleasures, the fame, the money, the women, everything. And we were willing to do that because our motto right off the bat was what Mother Teresa said that hit to our hearts. We're not called to be successful. We're called to be faithful to God. That is our success. <laughs> So with that crazy naivete, we just started on a, on, a, on a couch in Eduardo's living room and a cell phone, all jobless, uh, and one of us homeless, basically, what do you want us to do, Lord? And praise God, six months later, this little dream of ours, Bella, became a reality, where we got funded for, for this film, sight unseen, script, without a script, uh, by just incredible people that the Lord brought to us. And um, before I get to Bella, I'll be very quick. You guys have seen the movie Braveheart, I'm sure. For over a century in Scotland, there was the vote to make a Scottish Parliament independent, to have their own independent Parliament along with the United Kingdom and London and everything else. And for 100 years, it just kept failing and failing and failing and failing. Braveheart came out. What, what was the year, Jason? 19 what? 1996. In that year, not only did, did they vote and, and succeed in making an independent Scottish parliament, but it was an overwhelming landslide. Braveheart, great film. Bella has something a little bit different. Somebody said recently, and I don't mind bragging about this because this film came through us, not from us. Bella can be, for the pro-life movement, what Uncle Tom Cabin 
the book was for slavery because we've seen the fruits of this film. How many in this room have seen the film? If you can just by raise of hands. And what did you think of the film? Well, God bless you because this film really in an effective way puts out the message of life in a way that hits home. Like I said, within six months of, of the couch and nothing, we were all of a sudden on the set to this film. Within a year, we finished it and we submitted it to the largest film festival in the world, the Toronto International Film Festival. A few thousand films are submitted, only a couple hundred get in. Uh, you know, Babel and Last King of Scotland, All the King's Men, Barat, which is absolute garbage. All these films were there. And here, Little Bella was there. And we were so excited that we got into this festival. And um, crazily enough, films that win that festival, the People's Choice Award, Normally, they go on for the Oscars. Life is Beautiful, um, Chariots of Fire, Princess Bride, Cyrano, American Beauty, Garbage, Hotel Rwanda, so on and so forth. Despite Against All Odds and everything else, our little film not only got into that festival, but we wound up winning the biggest film festival in the world, which to us is amazing. 